Rob Whitman joins us right now, the Republican Virginia Congressman, uh, not a big fan of the, the kowtowing that he and others think is going on among our politicians when it comes to dealing, certainly, uh, with China. Specifically, uh, as you know, Congressman, we've got our Secretary of State on his way there. We are told that Xi Jinping has no intention of meeting with him, but he just met with Bill Gates. What do you make of that? Well, first of all, I can guarantee you that the conversation with Bill Gates didn't involve anything of substance. I guarantee he didn't talk to Xi Jinping about human rights abuses, about Uyghur genocide, or about the theft of intellectual property from companies like Microsoft, or these aggressive aircraft intercepts in the air defense identification zone, or these aggressive shipping counters in the South China Sea. China wants all this to be a visual. They don't want substance. They want uh, they want uh, appearance, and that's the disturbing part of this. The same too with Secretary Blinken that goes go, going over there. There are no preconditions to this visit. If you are going to visit China, there needs to be preconditions that need to be advertised so people know what we're going there to do and what we expect as an outcome of those discussions. You know what's weird, um, Congressman. And it's like we're living in opposite worlds. The Chinese love to meet with our business titans, not so much our politicians. Uh, in the United States, we tend to want to meet with politicians and heads of state, that is, at the White House. Uh, not so much foreign CEOs, uh, billionaire or not. It's weird. And, and China's making it very clear. We prefer your rich guys, not your politician guys. What do you make of that? Well, listen, I think it's because they've been able to get the these business leaders, these tech companies, to capitulate. They've been able to force them to do things that otherwise they know our government would not agree to. I think they look at it as a sympathetic audience. They know when they talk to policymakers here that there's a, there's a very stern and direct position that we have, and this is on both sides of the aisle, Neil, about what we are going to do with policy towards China. We are not going to tolerate this aggressive behavior, behavior that's meant to harm the United States. You know, Xi doesn't want to be asked the hard questions. He wants a friendly audience, and he sees Bill Gates, as he says, as an old friend. That's why they gravitate towards those leaders and not to government officials that are going to ask the tough questions. You know, I wonder, though, because it's not just Bill Gates. He's the latest. He's not the last, and he's not the first. I mean, uh, Tim Cook was over there trying to secure good relations. Of course, uh, we've seen numerous times Elon Musk. I'm just wondering whether we have to send a message to CEOs or those who might be in one way, shape, or form representing the United States, cool it on the groveling. I think we do, and I think we need to send a clear message, too, across this nation to businesses to say not just uh, cozying up to the Chinese, but also their, their capitulation and handing over intellectual property. Also, how investments are taking place in Chinese companies that are directly tied to the CCP, in Chinese bonds that go to fund the CCP. Neil, we are feeding the wolf that's going to eat us. This has to stop. Then how does it stop? I mean, it seems that... China, by trying to woo all of these business leaders, likes the money, likes the business part. Uh, that, that is their bread and butter. And you would think that they would draw the connection that better relations with us secures more bread and butter. And, and yet, it, they seem to be in the driver's seat when it would appear just economically, at least for the time being, they need us more than we need them. Well, it's it, and that's exactly the case, Neil. I think our companies are so captured by the idea that they can't walk away from 1.4 billion people in the marketplace in China. But what they're willing to give up to get that, to me, is harmful not only to their businesses, but to the United States. We have to stand strong against Xi Jinping because their, their focus is to destroy the United States. It's not a friendly competition. For those folks that say, oh, this is a strategic competition, it is not. Look at what China is doing strategically and economically against United States interests around the world. If we keep giving in, they'll continue to weaken us. And one day we're going to wake up and go, how did we get here? And it's because it's like a death by a thousand cuts. We have to stand strong and go, no, we are not going to do those things. We're not going to give in. We're not going to stand for uh, handing over intellectual property. We're not going to stand for these investments that go to fund Chinese companies that, that unfairly compete against the United States. I mean, in every turn, you look at this and go, this is failed policy, and we've got to get the policy right and stand strong to China. If not, their behavior is not going to change. All right, we'll see what happens. Congressman Whitman, good seeing you. Have a safe weekend.